All right. Everybody hit refresh. Okay. Sorry about that, people. We are actually here, I think. We are actually here. We're trying. We're going to go with a new link and just see if we can make this work out. I, I've got a, I'm going to go hit this onto the Discord. If you haven't found me, we will just go right ahead and try to fire this up. Oh, my word. What a joy. Okay, do you see anything at all? Okay, cool. Hi, everybody. Sorry about the difficulties here. We are having having a tough time, uh, and I don't know why. It's very unusual. Uh, I'm just posting some links out. Okay, there we go. Um... Thank you all for your patience. Uh, I I do appreciate it. And I hope that some of you can actually find me here. Uh, I'm Christopher Dahl. Space art by Christopher Dahl. Professional live streamer. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I had everything working. And, of course, today, when I actually fire it up for the event, uh, none of it worked. And I think I've lost absolutely everybody. <laughs> There's probably nobody on the chat at all is there. So here we are. We're live. Yay. We're live and it. Oh, hey, Gold Dragon. Awesome. Good to see you. Thank you for joining me on the new on the new chat. <laughs> here we go. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to post one more. Um, I'm, just, I'm not even going to do that. All right, I'm just going to pretend like everything works. Oh, my gosh. We we had difficulty. I, I don't know. I didn't want to fire up to the one it actually created, which is sad because that's like what I put out to the entire world. Oh, my gosh. Um, hopefully, people will find us, right? Oh, man. Ah. Okay. Um, the problem is I don't even know if I'm actually broadcasting right now. Am I actually broadcasting? Am I actually, like, live? There's vo there's a voice. Okay, uh, let's do that. Let's do the um, let's let's go ahead and just re redo the hellos again. And here is Stephanie, my assistant, and uh, yes, assistant and general manager of operations. What are we gonna do today? So the plan today, twenty minutes into it, was to kind of just do a little show and tell of all the spaceship models that I've created over the years, uh, except for the drawing and painting of spaceships, I really loved building the models of them. So, yeah, uh, with luck, some of you have found me here. I am live! Yay! Thank you! I appreciate it. There's definitely more of a delay on YouTube, which is really weird. If this is not live, I find it odd that we are both on this side. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Again, my apologies, everyone. Uh, we'd hope to have this go a lot more smoothly than it has not. So, uh, in fact, I had I'd queued up a whole bunch of really cool freebie music for the background, but I don't know if I could fire that up yet. Do we? Do we take a chance? Do we take a chance? And I, <laughs> I know I don't. I don't know if I want to break anything with that. Anyhow, no breaking things. All right, we're just gonna 
Or it's going to go a music list. But hey, uh, for those of you who are just joining, welcome to, this is my home studio. I broadcast out of here for the live stream every Wednesday on Twitch. And I've got, it's surrounded by paintings and books and other fun things. And Stephanie and I have gone into the garage and pulled out pretty much all the models that I'd built over the last, what, 20 years or so. And they had to get packed away a few years back. We we had to, had to shake things up in the house a little bit. We moved an entire baking kitchen into our home. So the display space was suddenly at a premium. So actually, I haven't seen a lot of these in a long time myself. Um, and yeah, there, <laughs> there, there's, a, there's a lot. Anyway, let's go out over to the table. We're going to pull these out a little bit as we go. And I'm going to talk a little bit about them and uh, hopefully not annoy everybody uh, with this as much as possible. <laughs> but uh, for those of you that have watched on my live stream, we were doing a, a Saturday, or sorry, a Friday live stream. And uh, one of the ones we did, uh, this proved to be pretty popular. We built this uh, wonderful, the, gosh, the architect. Uh, space colonizer, which is a spaceship in the form of an airbrush. And not just any airbrush, but this is the, the form of my Iwata HPC. So we actually built this on the live stream, and uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, we had a good time with that. So we will go ahead, and I'm just going to move on from there. I'm not getting any of the chats at all, so if somebody has a question... Um, you know, please feel free to, uh, feel free to reach out. And Stephanie here is going to help me, um, help me sort that out <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see if we can get any, anything, anything adjusted from there. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Some of these have, I've also pulled on the live stream here. Um, I have this lovely, uh, let's see if I can pull this down here. This is an older edition of the the Hawk from Space 1999, uh, the Airfix model. Sorry, Jamie, if you happen to have caught up with us, I don't have your round two one yet. They're all beautiful. Uh, a lot of these kits I haven't built in. I haven't built a lot of models in a long time. So this is going to be a little um, a little bit of a, of a journey, I guess you could say. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, there's pieces on each of them. Not all of these were actual styrene model kits, though. I have a number of number of garage resin kits including this USS Federation the dreadnought class from the old Star Trek show in one 1000 scale um, this was a I think Thomas Sasser is the one that actually put this one together I, I actually helped him with the cover art for the boxes that he made on this and, and as always feel free to drop me a line let me know if there's if the image isn't looking great or if there's anything else that's not not going so well we're happy to um we're happy to to make make the adjustments as we go along and i'm, I'm sure i'm gonna loosen up a little bit as we go and we can kind of chat about this but the, the fascination i had with models aside from trying to draw all of these ships all the time was you know they it's really hard to do if you're watching watching TVs and movies. Obviously, in this day and age, we have screen caps and you can freeze frame pretty much anything. But way back when I started doing all of this, it was hard to find reference. And so we, we sought it out in models. And these can all, of course, be, be used as, as reference material for doing drawings and artwork. And I, I actually think that's, a, that's an important aspect of any kind of uh, art. It's always good to work in 3D. Um, let's see. So yeah. Um, oh my gosh. I wish I actually had a better, better bit of feedback on what was happening. I'm kind of feel like I'm walking in the dark here. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Yeah. There's not many people on here. Like Rhonda was here and there was another guy and they weren't here. I feel like we've just toasted the entire event. Maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to what? Reschedule it possibly? Yeah. Ah, trying so it's to trying to catch up to live. Thank you. Good on the yes. Camera looks smooth. So far, great. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarn. I appreciate it. And hello, Linda. Thank you very much. Trying to catch up to live. I know it's uh, I made a whole event on YouTube for this, and it's supposed to just be like, oh yeah, we're just gonna fire that up, and and then like nothing happens. So I'm I'm sure there's 
I'm sure there's difficulties all over the place. Um, yeah, I I don't I. It, it, I don't. I'm used to how Twitch handles difficulties, and right now, yeah, we're, we're just handling it the best we can. So close, right? Yeah, there we go. That's a good idea. So, I mean, we can just... I mean, you have a lot of models. I have a lot of models. There are. There are a lot of models. So, I mean, we could do this for days. We'll we'll go through a bunch of it today. Again, my apologies. Oh my gosh. So uh, I'll just go through some of the ones that I have and share with you a few stories about them. I, first, I pulled some of the ones off the shelf that I haven't really shown on the live stream. Some of you watch the Dirk Benedict Battlestar Galactica Viper drawing a video on Twitch. I, I showed off the studio scale Viper and Cylon Raider that I have on the shelves and Right now, they're trapped behind all the tables, so I, I might pull those out later. Anyhow, let's just go ahead, and we're gonna we're gonna slide on out and and slide some more of these down. Again, Space 1999 Airfix Hawk. Ah, keeping it in camera as best we possibly can. Um, some of these models were ones that I had built when I was younger, uh, including the Hawk here. Uh, well, that's really blown out color-wise, isn't it? But um, I'll I, I can adjust the lights. You're doing great. <laughs> Being hard on yourself worked. Oh, excellent. Great. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks, Arn. Awesome. Cool. Uh, I'm just covering up my intense frustration with YouTube and Streamlabs for things that should work the way that they say they should. So, yes. Ah, I blame I blame them. Anyhow. Uh, so, anyway, I, I built this kit probably twice back in back in the I'm not even gonna say what year because it I, it's gray uh, but I didn't I didn't do a good job when I was younger I used to just kind of put the models together and sometimes I'd throw paint on them and call it good but when I got into it again at a later point in my life I really wanted to put more of an effort into the paint and the details and so what you see here some of these I came back and found them uh, I think I found this one on eBay and it was um, it was actually kind of nice to revisit it. I didn't even some of these parts aren't glued on, so there there will be wonkiness with the uh, with the ships. Anyway, that's kind of fun. I'm gonna move that aside. Uh, Stephanie's gonna be my Vanna White today for <laughs> for okay. for moving moving things around a little bit. Um, yeah, this this one's pretty. This I, I love the dreadnought. I love the three three nacelle design. I'm gonna try to make sure I remember to keep it in camera here. Um, it's a very heavy model. It's actually listing a little bit over the years because resin is um, a little soft. But there we go. Careful with that one. It's front heavy. There, yeah, there we go. So getting to eBay. Some of these are gonna have silly stories to them. So yeah, there we go. Uh, and I'm gonna move out. I'm gonna move out our airbrush ship there. There we go. And then we'll be, yeah. Thank you, Stephanie, for doing this while we're being recovered from surgery too. Yes, there we go. Uh, <laughs> there's dust on. There's dust on the model. There's dust. That's a, that's a special effect. Uh, it's very important to do that. Um, yeah. So this is from the the movie Aliens, the second movie in the Alien franchise, directed by James Cameron, Sigourney Weaver. This was the Sulaco, and this is a beautiful little model kit that was put out by Halcyon, and they did these limited run models. I remember they, they, were, they were far more expensive than what I was used to paying for models, even though they were a plastic model kit, but they were short run ships. I didn't pick it up back when it came out, so I, I, I chased it down on eBay. And I was figuring about, you know, at the time, 45 50 bucks I'd be willing to put towards this thing at the most. So I did my bidding. Someone else was... I got into a bidding war with another space science fiction nerd, and I was so mad, I'm like, fine. I'm going to jam this thing up to 80 bucks, and then you can win your model. And you can have it yourself, but you're not gonna you're not gonna pay for what I wanted to. And, and then they dropped out, and I won it for eighty bucks. So it was really, I was a little frustrated, but it's it's a nice little build up. Um, some of these I actually retrenched the lines on here until I found out much years later that they actually were raised surface panels. Uh, so much for accurizing. 
Uh, but I actually think it turned out it's not much of a paint job. It's really a lot of a lot of grays and panels, but it's still pretty fun. Yeah. Okay, this is fine. Keep going. Great. Hey, JV of Comic Greetings. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you had to refine you. I know my my original um my original live that I set up just did, said no or, or didn't want to work. So I've I've been left in the dust. <laughs> All right. So Sorry, Jamie, not all of these are round two of editions of these kits. So many of these were out before. Actually, I think some of these I built before round two got back into doing uh, doing the Star Trek models. But I'm making up for it. <laughs> uh, anyhow, we have here another sample of a resin aftermarket uh, model kit. A, a lot of Star Trek ships, oh, a lot of ships in general, don't make it into the mass market where you could just buy them in a store from somebody. And this is one of them. Uh, this was actually featured in Star Trek Voyager, and my favorite part about this particular model is that th there are no parts to it. It was literally sculpted and cast as one piece, a and it's it's a cute little ship, and I thought, oh yeah, yeah, this will be like, uh, you know, this will be a quick paint job. You know, this is probably like a two-day two -day build at, at most. Um, as it turns out, Star Trek models have a lot of <laughs> These ships have a lot of details that really need a lot of finessing and a lot of help. So <laughs> the uh, um, so it ended up taking me like a month of, of fine painting and decal work. <laughs> oh, you drew up CAD for a new Sulaco, and then management pulled the plug. Oh, that's so oh, that's so frustrating. Oh my gosh, and then they wonder why why we can't. yeah. We well, were so gun shy about announcing anything. Oh no, I totally get it. Oh my gosh, Jamie, I've I've met the model community too. I, I wouldn't even imagine trying to like say or even hint at what might be out there because people are going to ah, they're gonna freak out, and it doesn't matter what you say. People, some people are gonna hate anything anyway. So the heck with them. I still have fun with them. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, it, it, these are kind of fun. I think uh, here we go. We've got the. Uh, we got the Klingon battle cruiser that was originally put out by by Polar Lights version one, um, I, and and this is looking a little. Um, it, are, are these? Please let me know if the focus is bad. I, I feel like maybe I should probably make a quick adjustment on this because yeah, that's that's just not cool. Maybe I will focus control that and let's see how we go. Uh, it didn't help any. Didn't help any at all. So there we go. I'll I'll try my best to keep it keep it going in there. Uh, these are great kits. I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a plug. This has been reissued a few times, and I think they're still out there uh, in the market now. For the old school Star Trek fans, the old Klingon battle cruiser is such a classic shape. I I will tell you I I do have some familiarity with the original design for this. Uh, Thomas Sasser worked on it, and I was at the time he was actually still talking to me. Uh, well, I mean, all right, so he's since passed, so he can't talk to anybody right now, and that's sad. And I do, I feel bad. I'm not making fun of him. He did say he got a little scale issue wrong on the head of this, but I don't think it really affects it at all. I think it looks fantastic. So, yeah, I, I like having... There's going to be a, a series of Star Trek ships in the mix. These two? Yeah, those okay. two. Thank you. Um, and, and I know this is going to be a lot... They're, they're actually, as I started unboxing some, we are actually going to start getting a few that are together. I'm just pulling a few that were kind of loose here. I'm watching on my TV and the focus isn't bad. Okay, good. Thank you. Um. I, I present to you Fine Molds Jedi Starfighter, which I thought would have been a fun kit, but it, the entire surface of this model is covered in decals. Not my favorite way to deal with with ships, but it's kind of cute. Fine Molds did a great job with their Star Wars models. They really kind of pushed a lot of detail at a time when a lot of models were pretty soft, and I, I was pretty happy with it. But, uh, yeah. I, we need a mask. We need a mask? Yeah. There's so much stuff. There's so much to... <laughs> Stephanie's over here creating clouds of dust. <laughs> Anyhow, um, I wasn't terribly fond of all of the uh, all of the newer Star Wars movie ships, but I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, a blast from the past. Someone was talking about Sequest DSV the other night on my live stream, and I said casually that I had the old monogram kit of it. <laughs> 
Hey, you made it. Nick the Toy Collectors here. Greetings. How you doing, Nick? Awesome. Thank you for joining. Thank you all for joining. Just to let me just, just to say, you know, thank you, because I know that this has been, uh, this ended up being a little trickier than any of us intended. <laughs> Yikes. All right, I'm going to make a little adjustment with the camera here, see if I can get a little tighter shot, because we, we will have some larger kits, but uh, <laughs> this is... Okay, so just just so we know, uh, Stephanie's on with the on with the brush. Yes, <laughs> we we're we're dusting as we go. Anyhow, all right, no more ADHD. We're gonna get right back to it. Sequest, right? Uh, I I like the show Sequest. I thought it was a pretty cool show, um, and I and I like the sub at the time. You know, this is when Lightwave was being you know just huge for special effects on TV. Sequest and Babylon Five came out at the same time. There were a few others. And I, and I just really like the ship. It reminded me of, like, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, the Irwin Allen show, and a few others. And it was a very unique design. Um, this is a very, very simple kit, but and I didn't do much more other than assemble it and then basically do a lot of uh, a lot of air, freehand airbrush work. It, it, it's all freehand airbrush. I, I did a couple of colors. I think I tried to get a little... Um, pull out the details with a bit of a wash, but I... it was so close to the color it's hard to see <laughs> we tried to get permission to have fine molds run kits for us and disney shot us down oh no that's really too bad i you know i i, I thought fine mold did a good job i i, I know they kind of came to an end i i would someday jamie i would love to hear that story just out of just out of curiosity um because I, I really think they did a pretty good job but then you know bandai came out and we're just like completely cleaning up uh cleaning up the, the mark here <laughs> Sequest was an earnest attempt at sci-fi on TV. I I agree. I I enjoyed a bit of it, and uh, it, it kind of went through a few variations. But I, I love having this model. I, I, this one deserves a lot of my models deserve lights, and you'll notice they don't have a lot of lights, which is a little unfortunate. But we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we move up Sequest off. At the end, we'll do a nice pan shot of all of these. Okay. And. Because some of you have seen the video where we visited a spaceship Airbnb, I have, this was the Polar Light, not Polar, yeah, Polar Lights, sorry, Polar Lights did the, uh, did their Lost in Space Jupiter 2, uh, gosh, this was back in the, the late 90s they came up with this, and I, I think they worked with uh, Ron Gross, who's a Jupiter 2 aficionado. And I, I know this is a simple, this is a spaceship of a very simple design. We, we've been revisiting the old Lost in Space shows, actually. And, and you know, it, it's kind of goofy. They, they were fun. It was, a, it, was, it was something I grew up with in the summertime on Channel 50 out of Detroit. And there was never a model of the Jupiter 2. It was killing me. I, we would put paper plates together to make our own. I, I think I found... A vacuform kit somebody put out in the 70s or, or 80s that was kind of okay. It was kind of terrible. Um, it, it's regrettable I don't have the lights on this one because I do actually have a light core in the bottom of the ship where the, the engines will uh, will rotate. But my I, I, I wasn't smart about powering it. There's actually a 9-volt battery inside the body of this, and I, I would have to, have to kind of pop it all open. But uh, it, I mean, it's it's a simple model, right? Well, they're not simple to build. <laughs> this one had this top lid would come off so you could see all the detail on the inside. And I decided instead of that, I was going to seal it all off. And you could still see the line where the seal was. Thank you, Silver Paint. Every time I would try to fill that line in, that the putty would suck right into the line. And it, because it, putty contracts over time. It's really crazy. So yeah. Oops, sorry. A little thing fell out. I, I actually put little panels in the bottom for switches. Of course, none of them are going to go. Nope, nope. Nothing's going to light up. Nothing at all. Nope, forget it. I, I think at some point, I, I kind of hoped I'd find this one enough early enough where I could stick the lights in. But it's still pretty fun. So I have a, I have a Jupiter too. I have a few more of those, but we'll see how it goes from there. <laughs> Uh-oh. Stephanie's Stephanie's taking photos. So that's the Jupiter 2. Now Mobius Models has since come out with a really great version of it. This is a this is a great version too. Uh, although I think even Ron Gross said it was a little a little tightened up. I I dig it, but uh Mobius Models did a really nice um 
larger version that I would I would very much like to uh, like to pull. I've got the, got it in the box anyway. Yikes! All right, so those are the kind of the kits that I had on the shelf. We're we're gonna we're just gonna throw this up here on the table. Uh, hey hey Wes, greetings. How you doing? Thank you. No, you're not late. Trust me. We uh we had difficulties. Um, here's a box. And this is a box full of all the awards. I'm not even going to go through all of them, but um, look at that Wonderfest best Gary and Jerry Anderson inspired model. Thank you. <laughs> There's a pile of these, and um, you know, I used to do, I used to do the model shows. Um, I, I haven't been in a while, and that's regrettable. And I'm going to have to change that. Wonderfest was a fantastic, uh, is a fantastic model show and contest. But, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd pull that out. That was kind of fun. I'm going to set that down here. Gosh, where do we even go next? Let's go to this one. We're, we are now going to enter the archaeological dig version of the show. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to pull this right up. So, yeah, archaeological dig version. <laughs> Yikes. Totally a Dixie Bowl and a sandwich plate with a couple of pieces of tape. Instant Jupiter 2. Yeah. Exactly. So when I when I started pulling the models out, I I, I was grabbing any kind of material and uh, that we could possibly find that would pack them. I'd like to take a moment and thank my friend Richard Irving for leaving us with this fine uh, fine material. All right. So some of these obviously I'm not going to have the stands for, but uh, let's just pull. Maybe what I should just do is do this. I, I'll set this out so I can pull it out. When Star Trek Enterprise first came onto the scene, it was a big secret. What's what? What's the new Enterprise gonna look like? What's it? What's it gonna be? You know what? What? Uh, what are they gonna do? As it turns out, they just took the Akira from the movies and flipped it over and made it a little older. That's okay. This was one of the first. Um, I think this was, might have been literally the first model that came out uh, of Enterprise. And this was a... Yeah, and it's a little stubby on it, but I think it was a fine job. This was a resin kit put out by the notorious Thomas Sasser of PNT Models. Well, PNT Models is what he went by, I think, right? Yeah, I think so. I'm, I'm, looking, at, I'm looking at Stephanie as, as, if, as if she would know. Um, yeah. Uh, he was a notorious character. I had to chase him around Wonderfest to get this kit. Damn it, I paid for this kit. I want my $2. No, anyway, it was a nice little kit. And uh, I, I, I can honestly say I, I had one of the first, which was exciting. And I, I worked with a lot of smaller models um, just because I found that traveling from the Seattle area to Wonderfest, it, it's, it's fun bringing big models. And I know people that do this. They usually drive. But for me, it was like flying in an airplane. We had to... Yeah, I had to pack everything in and go. But um, so I ended up in this phase where I have a lot of smaller kits. I think this box that I'm working with has got a bunch of them, including. Oh, yes. Wait, which was the uh, the designation of this? Uh, oh, this is the USS Antares, which was it, it's a fun Star Trek ship that was based on the animated series. But this made an appearance in the original series when they remastered all the special effects. Was the Sassafras model? Yeah, that's the one. Sassafras model. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> he he went by a number of num number of names. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't wish to speak ill of the dead. I, I, I know Thomas Sasser had, you know, he, he loved this stuff as much as the rest of us, and he did put a lot of his heart and soul and life into it, but... He also had a unique ability to burn bridges. <laughs> so anyway, um, no, nobody's going to deny that. <laughs> All right. Anyway, continuing on, I, I think this was a Gizmotron model, a resin model of the, uh, this is the USS Kelvin that was featured in the first Star Trek movie, 2009. And I don't know, there was something really fun about this shape and this ship. I, I feel like the first part of the Star Trek 2009 movie really nailed kind of the Star Trek feel and uh, look and feel and sound. So I I, I, I just kind of felt, I, I really like the ship. 
And I ended up using this one. I don't know if it's hard to see. I There's a lot of texture detail on the surface, the panels that are pretty typical of a Star Trek ship. Um, I did a training kind of show-and-tell demo at Wonderfest one year on hull paneling. And, and yeah, this was, uh, this was basically just an airbrush with a couple of very simple templates with a lot of squares and multiple shots of them. Hey, it looks like your Hallmark ornament. It's about the same size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you keep the boxes for the kits or do you toss them? Oh, uh, good question. Um, for, for kits like this, the boxes are usually just sort of, you know, general U-line white boxes, which is the way the garage kit goes. I've kept very few model boxes. I Some of them... Uh, some of the more recent ones coming out, like the the round two enterprise that I'm going to build on the live stream eventually, the 350th scale one, uh, I will probably keep that box because, damn, it's a nice box. It's got some great photos. It's got great reference on it. It's got diagrams of the ships and callouts, accurate callouts of color. So some some I keep, but for the most part, for the most part, once I'm done with the model, I I will I will chuck the box. Um, and, and in this one, the box is long gone. All right, now I'm like, okay, just so we can kind of see what I'm doing here, I'm going to switch on over to my my, my talking view. I, I have this just box in my lap, and what I'm afraid of is that I'm going to fling out all of the, the material, and all of a sudden a model's going to fly across the floor. Like, okay, there, clearly there's a peg for something. <laughs> So yeah, I just want, I'm just going to be careful here for a second. I'm not really sure which ones they go to. Da da da. Purple fabric of doom. There we go. It's actually a really cool fabric. It changes colors. Yikes. Um And so I'll, I I find this amusing cuz as much as I love all of the uh the Star Trek models I pull out, half of them were garage kit versions which meant that they were technically unlicensed which is you know kind of <laughs> kind of not good but you know i have to say uh, the 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 licensed kit companies have done a fantastic job of coming up with some of these amazing models that we never would have seen all right i don't have a stand for this one and i was talking about resin kits so let me show you the first resin kit that i purchased ever uh, as a as a model, this is the the start. There's a couple of them they'll pull out. This was featured in the movie First Contact, and let me get, switch back over to the old art view here. This is the USS Akira in one fourteen hundredth scale. It is, gosh, I think I actually do have that one. Here we go. Yep, there we are. I've got a stand for it. Let me put it on the stand here, so I think that gives it a little a little extra pizzazz. Actually, I think that's how my, my some of my models suffered in the contest entries, is my stands weren't great. But uh, oh wait, oh here we go, boom! One more time. I, I'm gonna be, I am gonna be a little careful about this, if I can. There we go. It was balanced that way. So this this crazy little ship, I, I think it has like 20 seconds of screen time in Star Trek: First Contact, but it was fun. Um, and I, and I really, I really liked these, I, I liked these ships. Uh, it, it was a cool design. It was very unique for the Star Trek series and uh, movies. And again, nobody had, I mean, there was no inkling of it at the time that there was going to be a, a kit of, of the Akira. And, you know, folks at Starcraft Models, which is a, a gentleman out of Florida who would build tons of these things. And he was very good at it and very quick at it. He showed up that that I think it was one of my first. It was my first Wonderfest year two thousand, and he had several of the ships that were featured in First Contact. So it got referred to as the class of ninety six. These ships because they were all in like a you know twenty second scene in the movie, and all of his fans were going, "Oh, what was that? Oh, what was that? Oh, that was cool!" And it made a neat noise flying away. So. Their uh, resin kits, uh, it, it, it's it's solid solid plastics. There's a couple of pieces, uh, interconnecting piece here, and then and then the engines. And putting it together, not so tricky. The tricky part is the is the paint job. It's just a lot of masking 
and and then aftermarket decals. But uh, yeah, I I really dig this one too, Nick. This is one of my favorites, and uh, I've I've enjoyed having this one. Oh, I got my little. I did, again, I didn't do so great on my stand. So here's my like little sign for it. Yay, my USS Akira. There we go. Kind of fun. I actually think I got a merit award for that when I built it finally and brought it to Wonderfest. Rod is back. Rod is back. Thank you, Rod. Uh, greetings. Sorry about the delay and the, the confusion. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Thanks for the compliments, Chris. Oh, you're welcome, Jamie. Seriously. I think the manufacturer model manufacturers abandoned the market and enterprising people found ways to step into the gap. Oh, it, it, there was definitely... Yeah, it was... Um, it was very strange when I started getting back into building models in that, you know, mid to late 90s. Uh, it, it, so the science fiction genre kits were just kind of not really a thing. And, uh, you know, really, it wasn't until Polar Light started dropping in and Fine Molds came in. Those were the two I remember that were kind of the big ones that really, really started pun punching some stuff out and and some really cool stuff. Um which is really exciting, but uh, and and I I think over the years, oh my gosh, it's actually all flipped. Like I used to be like, wow, there's all these garage kit makers making cool stuff. How am I ever going to own all of this stuff? And now the tables have turned. <laughs> right, I, I basically want to own the round two catalog right now from the last seven years because it's like, wow, space 1999 too. Oh, we'll get to some of those. That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. It's cool that that ship has been in Star Trek Picard. Yeah, that the last one, the Akira, was in Picard. It's okay. We don't have to bring it back. That was really fun. <laughs> awesome. All that matters, we still can't keep up with demand, and frankly, we won't. Oh yeah, I, I, I that that's that's like music to my ears. I the the kits when you put out a good model. It's sad because a lot of times they'll just it used to be they would be out for a couple of years and then they they were gone. And you would never see them again. But now it's sort of shifted. And um, I, I think that everyone has a, a new appreciation for, you know, what goes into a model kit. They they used to be more toy-like. And now, of course, all of us have grown up and we have better tools and things. And even, I think, the folks that, that make them uh, have, have access to better better tools to get them done. It's really cool. I, I, have, I think it's been fun. There, there are some amazing models out there and these are all older including my little scout ship this was a another one one thousand scale enterprise kit that was bashed into the franz joseph design scout ship with a single nacelle and i didn't even finish this one you could tell because i never put a i never put a dull coat on top all of my decals are still shiny as you can still see in the light <laughs> So very cool. Yeah, uh, I, it, it cracks me up that this actually had an aftermarket kit because I think the only thing they give you is like the, I think the neck, which was weird because there's a neck in the original kit. You still needed to buy a Polar Lights model to do this. Um, and then like the little stock, it was... <laughs> this one gets my award for the least amount of effort required to do an aftermarket garage kit modification. <laughs> But I keep it in the mix because I had to have all of them. That was that was you know you had to have all of the all of the uh, the, the, the 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 Franz Joseph ones, and this went with that dreadnought with the three engines. In fact, um, before I go too far, I I know the stand. I, I have the stand in here somewhere, and I've pulled this out on the show before. This was a also a, a one one thousand scale Enterprise kit by Polar Lights which is still available. I would highly recommend you get it. I just built one of these for my friends Rafi and Klee for their, um, for their planet set. And I, I absolutely adore this kit. I think I still have like eight of them in the garage in the boxes. <laughs> this is the, I built this one up as the USS Farragut as part of a, we had a model, we had a model club here in the Seattle area. And we all build spaceship models. We we all got together. And one year, they decided to build all 12 of the known Federation starships from the original show. And, you know, someone built the Enterprise and the Constellation, the non-destroyed one. And, and I picked the Farragut because in the old show, 
supposedly Captain Kirk himself started out on the Farragut as a young lieutenant. And I actually built this one with the, the older style nacelle caps, um, the taller bridge dome, the bigger dish, and the a, a different engine bit on the back. So this looked like the original pilot model that they used in the Star Trek shows. They had some differences to them. Um, but yeah, I, actually this was in the hobby shop for about 12 years until the hobby shop closed and I, and I got it back again. So yeah. Uh, do, Nick's asking, do you own or did anyone make battle damaged Star Trek kits? Oh, um, I don't have, I'm trying to think if I've got a battle damaged Star Trek kit. I've got a battle damaged Galactica kit coming up that I can't wait to show everybody, but I don't think I've, I haven't battle damaged my Star Trek ships much. I kind of build them, you know, as new and fresh as they would be coming off the line. That would be cool. My my good friend Jay Claudek, for those of you in the model community, has done, I, I think, one of the finest con destroyed Constellation class starships because he made it look exactly like it looked in the Doomsday Machine, which used an old AMT model kit of the Enterprise, and he went and did the whole damage to it. It was brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I saw that one year at Wonderfest, and I... I Still was one of my favorites, but uh, yeah, this one there's some um, uh, like there's some weathering on it, but not not actual battle damage to it. And unfortunately, the stand is in one of these boxes. I had this sitting on the shelf. The stand is in a box somewhere, so I'll I'll keep it handy uh, because it looks good in front of my painting. So. <laughs> but I'm gonna move off this one here, and then I we gotta move on to some new some more kits. He says, and I don't know. Dum -ba -dum -bum -bum. Let me see here for a second. Da, 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 da. I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do. I'm. I'm gonna slide. We're picking up boxes. Yes. There we go. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Okay. I. I'm not kidding you. Let me. Let me just give you an idea of what we're talking. What we're dealing with. I'm. I, you're gonna see the ugly part of the office. I, I have piles of these boxes around us here, and Stephanie's helping me. <laughs> or you know, we're we're reorganizing as we go, and I I literally haven't seen some of these um in about what four or five years I think. Yeah. Yep. They used to all be they used to all be up on my shelves, which is why they all still have dust on them instead of being in the boxes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Back to the art view. What do we have here in this one? Oh, I could see it already. Yes. Oh, there. We're gonna go in themes. I, I, there's a lot of Star Trek models. I, I know if you're a little sick of Star Trek, I'm sorry. We will get to the fun non-Star Trek ones. That will happen. Here we go. Thank you. Um, this actually fits well because this becomes the sister piece to the model I was l literally just talking about. Oh wow. Wait a second. I didn't even realize I did this. You've got two of them. Well, this is. <laughs> Okay, so here's the Enterprise, and here's the Farragut. <laughs> now, I just explained. Well, I need a pointer. I need a pointer. What's a good pointer? Uh, I know. Here we go. Da -da -da. Something that, that has color to it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going we're gonna to look at the, the anatomical differences between starships. <laughs> the... Please, please note the taller bridge dome and the nacelles that don't have lights, but they have little spikies on them. And this one also has no lights and little spikies and a bigger dish. And I think, oh yes, the the older style. He's <laughs> like, what? What do you mean he had those? Uh, you know, I'm I, I'm being a completist here. I wanted the version of the Enterprise that. Uh, as it was shot in the pilot episodes, they used a lot of stock footage in the show. So a lot of times you would see the ship and it just it just kinda it just kinda looked different, you know? It it, it had a different different profile and it confused me as a child because I was desperately trying to see details of these ships as they were going along and you know, you're on an old TV, you never could tell. It wasn't until years later that people have dug up a lot of information about it, and they realized that between the time they shot the pilot episode of Star Trek and they actually rolled into production on the series, 
they added lights they add they changed the top dome uh if you notice this one i i didn't use you maybe you can see maybe it's hard to see i don't know um all the windows are dark they they didn't have lights in this version i think they had a couple of tiny lights on the um like on the front or something like that but it was it was mostly unlit a giant wooden 11 foot wooden and fiberglass model that was mostly unlit so that was the reason why i had multiples of those i i, I had to build one this way this one I actually took my time on it took a little while and then when i did the hobby shop one it was um i, I think i i think i was able to knock that one out quicker <laughs> <laughs> there was there was more of a time time issue there <laughs> yikes <laughs> so yeah um it, there's gonna be a few more of these let's just let's just put it that way i'm gonna slide these to the side here <laughs> uh what do we have next up on the list oh garage kit horror stories ladies and gentlemen i present to you this was called the the merchant man freighter uh, that was in Star Trek Three: The Search for Spock, and this was a kind of a of a rogue ship. Imagine, if you will, like the Millennium Falcon in the um, in the Star Trek universe. This had a bunch of you know, mer not maybe they call them mercenaries. Who knows what they actually were? I'm not sure, but uh, it was a. It, there's actually I, I always kind of like the design because it's so non-Star Trek it's very um, very greebly centric so yeah <laughs> Jamie Hood says yeah the first pilot version had no lights at all while windows were white windows were painted on exactly yeah it was uh, it was a very non-interactive model for what they were trying to do and even on the pilot they used very few shots of the big one which is pretty funny I can't even imagine them trying to hork that thing out and put the lights in like they did. Yeah. But yeah, this this Merchantman Freighter, I I really like this little design because, look, it's not gray. <laughs> That's one of the important things to it. It was actually a color. And I, I did some fun panel lines, but unfortunately the colors I chose were so close together, it's very difficult to tell. Is it accurate? Um, yeah, it was used at, yeah, it was, yes, it was used in TNG, this one's pretty darn accurate, honestly. Um, this particular kit, however, was put out by a UK company named Warp Models. And the um, <laughs> at the time in the 90s, there wasn't a lot of the same uh, polyurethane resins that our garage kit folks here in the States are using. So what they would use is the sort of epoxy style resins they would use in fiberglass and that stuff is expensive and it takes a while so they would add micro balloons to the goo as they poured it into the molds which meant that if i sanded anything on this model all of a sudden there were tiny little pinholes opened up on it you couldn't paint over them you, you would have to fill them so this kit I was very, very careful. I only sanded off a couple of things. It's mostly a paint job. And there's little metal bits for the ends on here. But yeah, this is actually, uh, from what I have seen, uh, to your question, Jamie, this this little, this is actually pretty accurate to what I've seen of the studio model, uh, especially for its size. So yeah. <laughs> have to tell you the the glue you suggested I buy is amazing. Oh, awesome, Rhonda. That's so cool. I used it for to fix a plastic doorknob I've been trying to fix for months. <laughs> um some of the hotter uh model cements used for plastic kits do very well at fixing household things. So I'm glad that you had a chance to to cut loose with it. <laughs> Looks like something Apogee would have made for BSG or Buck Rogers. Oh, I know, right? This thing is... Uh, I, I, I love this model. I I actually wish, wish this was a larger model. I wish my camera was better. Um, I, I hope that it's coming through. But I, I really enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed having this one. And even... I, I think it sat on my shelf for a year. I was so frustrated with the quality of the resin. And again, I understand why people would use that kind of resin. So I'm not like holding it against them. But it was such a... Uh, I, I, I hate it when you 
you, you you have to there's so much fine detail how would you fill that you you couldn't so i i had to be very careful about it when i finally just let go and said screw it i'm just gonna do a paint job eh, then i had fun so yeah <laughs> it was a good time all righty going deep into oh see now again i'm, I'm kind of trying my best not to not to flip open and fling out a whole bunch of stuff. I, this is clearly another Star Trek box. I'm so sorry. A lovely... Oh, yes. I'm going to pull a couple of these out. Because we got to the bad guys. What scale is that? I'm not certain, Wes. It's kind of a non-scale. I, I remember buying the box, and it didn't really have a... Um, it didn't really have much of a scale note to it. Oh man, I, I think half the fun of this is me just kind of setting up models. I'm gonna try. Let me try to set them up so I, you all can y'all can actually see them nicely. We'll get some bad guys out here, and we bring out the Romulans into flavors. Yeah, I think I need to grab a water. Hang tight here, folks. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, very good. Thank you. All right. Again with. Apologies to round two. <laughs> this Romulan, this, this one is actually, uh, yeah, this was, this was probably put out about five years just before a styrene version of this came out. This was a resin version. Sorry, sorry, ja sorry, Jamie. Uh, <laughs> which uh, I, actually, it, it, it's nice. This, uh, this was the, of course, the from the famous and one of my favorite episodes of Star Trek, The Balance of Terror, which is really kind of a retelling of Run Silent, Run Deep in a good way. You have both of those? Awesome! That's so cool. I It, it was really nice to have this ship in kind of an accurate shape, and I, I actually do have out in the garage the, the Styrene version because I am a completist, and I wanted to have it. And I... I my gosh, what a classic design. Look at that bird. That bird's a giant decal, and I, Chris hates decals, but this one looks really good. So I, I absolutely adore this, and it was nice to have this in the uh, in the mix. Um, I My color on it, I, I kind of went with a warm gray, but it worked out pretty well. And then, of course, from Enterprise, the, the AMT kit was terrible. Yeah, we were all a little... AMT in the 1970s, you know, they 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 lost all respect for <laughs> for actually putting out stuff that wasn't just a toy. So, well, we worked with what we had, right? Um, this one was also a garage kit put out by Starcrafts uh, of the again a Romulan ship, which uh, in theory is older than this one, although the design is pretty <laughs> pretty up to date. There. I like this though because honestly, this feels this feels like a Romulan ship in a huge way. Again, this is a resin kit with some different pieces. There's clear green out here, although I did not light this because they had glowy bits on the nacelles. Yeah, we we loved whatever we had. <laughs> Haven't had to try the courage to put the giant decal on yet. Oh, you just do it. You just do it. It's okay. But uh, the reason I really love this particular ship is this has all those John Eves hull panels on them. And, man, that guy could, like, seriously decorate and detail a Star Trek ship. I mean, come on. This is like this is like screaming John Eves all over the place. John, if you're watching, I love your ships. And I love this one. This is really cool. Uh, so I had to have it. Funny story. When you paint these resin kits, if you don't wash them because they put a lot of, like, like a greasy mold release on them. Usually it's a spray on. Sometimes they get a little heavy handed with it. Your paint won't stick to the model. And I had this all the way painted as far as you could see here. And uh, at one point I put down a piece of tape just to mask off one of these panels. And when I pulled it, the entire paint job peeled off all the way down to the plastic. I mean, it was it fell off in sheets. I was cranky, and I'd even I'd even washed the thing too. But so I basically it it, it got a bath in lacquer thinner after that. 
<laughs> You'll probably give yourself a headache if you try to make the ship designs align with the time frame. Oh, I know. It's... <laughs> because they've gone back to do supposedly older shows, but with, you know, technology that's 30 years newer, nothing's going to look as old. So, yeah. <laughs> in Star Trek, who was the first spacefaring race? Uh, in theory, from the races that we saw of the old Star Trek show, it's the Vulcans and the Romulans. They, uh, they were, I believe they're the oldest of the Starfleet races, and they were, they were kind of weird about it. Yeah. Yeah, paint is the worst. Oh, my gosh. You know, I, I, I'm i very careful now. Even with the sty the styrene kits aren't as bad. I, I think that they can take, once you get a good primer on a styrene kit or ABS, it works out well. But garage kit resin, you just don't know who was throwing the mold release that day. And it's like trying to paint on a bar of soap. It's just never going to happen. So, yeah, it was a little, you, you live and you learn. Every resin kit, and I don't have too many anymore, but any resin kit that I work on anymore gets uh, a serious chemical bath before I do any painting on it. Okay, there's something heavy in here, and I don't know. I'm going to have to dive in. I'm not sure. Uh, let's just hold on for a second, and then we'll maybe I'll get through the box and we can clear it. Oh, yes, the class of 96. Oh, wait. Wait, more Romulans. Actually, this is an unfinished model. Um... And I found a stand. I found a stand. Okay. Dun, da, da. So this was a, a Romulan scout ship. Um, I don't know. I, I It was not my favorite design, but I really liked one of the paint jobs on it. So that's in there. It. I didn't paint the little windows, but that's not what I'm excited about in here. What I'm excited about is the next class of 96. The USS Steamrunner. Yay. I think I can put that out here. This was uh, similar to the um, Akira. This goes with the Jupiter, too. Oh, okay. There we go. I can put those in there. And I think I've got stands. Oh, yeah, I've got all the stands. Look at that. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I've got the bottom of the box has all the stands. Go figure. Um, this was also... Uh, oh, it's another resin kit. Oh, my gosh. But um, this actually has some specialty decals on it, which worked out to help uh, help do a lot of these complicated shapes and everything. But like the Akira, this thing was maybe on screen for, you know, 20, 30 seconds. But I, I really enjoyed having them all together. And uh, yeah, it was pretty nifty. Um, the little red gumdrops are, are glowy engine bits uh, in the shows. So when you see this in, in the shows, there's like, you know, glowing drives. And I... I always felt bad, you know, you know that if this is lower decks, you'd be, you'd have like your room assignment right under the giant glowing red nacelle. So it'd feel like you're in a cheap motel someplace with a red neon line sign was out there out back. <laughs> Yo. I might, I might slide this back in here since it's like right on in here. But uh, I think that's, yeah. I, like I, I, said, other than the bases. I think it's that except for the bases. Yeah, there we go on that one. On that box, we we've cleared, two. we've cleared two boxes. <laughs> I'll slide that under here. Thank you. There we go. I don't know. Excuse me. Burp. I'm not sure where to go next. Honestly, this is tempting. However, I'm not sure. And then this one. I don't remember what's in any of these. Oh, I think that one's got the glass. Let's do. Okay, if you'd help me pull out the really awful Laura Croft out of that one. That would be great. And, oh, there's my Dune one. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, this one's unfortunately in pieces, but we'll keep it out just in case. Okay, I'll save that one for later. Intermission. No, sorry. Let's see, oh, yes, yes, indeed. Okay, I know what we're, we, we might be shifting gears a little bit. So maybe I, yeah, maybe we do a little slide of these down. Yeah, let's do that gently. No. No. We're going to, we, we might step away a little bit from the Star Trek universe here, um, which I know some of you are sad about and some of you not so sad about. But um, I I also have a few other like genres of, of kits in here including Battlestar Galactica. 
and I, I think that's what this box is right here. So I'm very, I'm very excited. And I will reach and grab that. Here we go. Dun, 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 dun. There's a witch. There's a dinosaur. Planet. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a ball. Yes. Um, you know, I, sometimes I collect things that I think might end up with, with being good stands. Okay. La the last Star Trek thing, because it's an unbuilt one. This is a, um, from, from the originals, this is an original AMT model kit of the Enterprise. This was going to be the last one that I built and painted. Um, so it, it's actually, it's incredibly reinforced. It, you, you could actually pick it up with these, uh, with these arms, uh, this, this kit is notorious for having saggy warp nacelles. And I think that I basically, these are filled with brass rods and completely filled with, uh, with super glue. So this thing isn't going to go anywhere, but it never got the paint job. I feel bad. So we will be at some point revisiting this with all the decals necessary. Here. Oh, okay. Thank you. There we go. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you. That paid you by. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was the. Um, uh, allow me to to introduce to you Hidden Worlds Two, which is currently a painting in progress. So I'm hoping that we can have that one finished and revealed shortly. Let's see, worlds. Uh, uh, a dinosaur. I actually have a dinosaur. I have a T Rex. There's what I was looking for. I'm gonna pull some of these out. Do we pull out the T Rex? I'm not gonna. I'm gonna hold on the T Rex. Well, people would probably love to see a dinosaur, so I'll, I'll pull out the dinosaur. This is our little, <laughs> our little intro, our little uh, segue, if you will, here. Um, oh, all the little plants fell off my thing. Oh well, that's a bummer. So yeah, there we go. Was it this way? No, like this. There we go. There's a little T Rex, and I forgive me. I I forget the name of the the artist. He was one of the more well-known uh, dinosaur artists at Wonderfest, um, and, and I, I got one of these from him, and it was just a it was just a nice little model and a nice little paint job. So we have a T Rex. Yeah. I think Rex is last name, but he's just an old Oh, uh, not on the painting, oh, no. Yeah, I yeah, I I did not do any airbrushing on the painting. No, it was. Um, The, the, the painting is entirely entirely oil paint. Well, it started as acrylic. That's right, sorry. It started as acrylic, and I, I've gone over with oils to uh, to give it that finesse. So, yeah, that was it's about 80% done, and I'm hoping to do kind of, You're getting the sneak peek now, but I'm hoping to do the big reveal of it here soon. So, thank you. I appreciate that. Neat. Oh, man, I keep needing more... More drinks. Mm -hmm. I know. But I, I'm actually really excited. I, I'm, I'm going to do a little prep work on here. So if you have questions, feel free to shoot them out here. This will be perfectly fine. Um, do you think you could help me, Stephanie? Yeah. There's a uh, there's a metal bar on the back that goes in there. Yeah. And, and it goes in at a weird angle. So I just wanted to uh, I'll give you all a little hint here. I'm pulling some things out. Stephanie's helping me get some of the stands together. And I'm pulling some of the stands together as well. Um, because I actually was very proud of these of these models. They're still some of my favorite. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to set this over here. I'm going to set these here for right now. Bear with me, folks. I know we just have a little... Uh, we're going we're gonna to walk the T-Rex out. All right. And I need to unbag them. Unbagging the kits. Yes, please. Thank you. All right. Let's get this one. Oh, man. I wish I can remember who manufactured these. And sometimes, it's just over the years, I have forgotten. Um, I'm just trying to fit the thing on the top there a little bit. And it's not. It's not. There we go. That one's there. That one really yellowed. I'm a little bummed about that. I know I went a little yellow with it, but it really looks like maybe it went more yellow. That's unfortunate. Okay. Um, 
Da, da, da. So, I'll start with these. Anyhow, uh, these were smaller, smaller kits, and I have, there we go, let's see if I can get these on in here so we can get a good shot of them. We have, from Battlestar Galactica, set them this way, 20, 2003 was when they redid the new Galactica, and they have the, the Vipers, which were, of course, the fighter craft from the show. And that was a that was an important element of the show, and it, in it, supposedly this Viper Mark II was like the older one, and then they had the Viper Mark VII, which was the much newer version. And this was, these were nice little kits by somebody. I wish I could remember his name. I I know somebody in, in our in our group will remember, and I'm sure I will too. These are tiny, tiny models, but they have really amazing detail. And hey, thank, thank you, appreciate it. The they came with decals. I'm shaking. I know it's so weird. Um, but yeah, they, it, it's hard for me the camera to catch all of this. There is a there is a pilot inside of each of these inside the clear cockpit. I remember I painted the faces on the pilots with a cat whisker that I happen to have. We have cats, so sometimes the cat whiskers <laughs> have come in handy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so this one, which one did I do this one as? Uh, oh, gosh, I can't even read it. Hold on a second. I think it says Starbuck. The, the decal is so tiny on it. That one. Oh gosh, I can't. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> I, I I think I had designated that one Starbuck from the show, and then the same with then of course this would have been Apollo's, but you can kind of see the pilot a little bit better in this one. Um, but yeah, these were really tiny models and beautifully detailed. I picked them up both. The bases I made myself. Um, I beveled off a bunch of styrene to make it look like the inside walls of the Galactica itself, because they had this kind of motif on the walls in there. And the custom decals that I'd made for each of the, each of them with the the stand names and and ship names and such. It was pretty fun. I really like those. These were, these were neat little kits. Again, that these were a garage kit company, but I know that Mobius models also released in the same scale both of these as uh, styrene kits, and and they're they're pretty cool too. I just never got the styrene ones. It was years later when that happened. Looks one sixty fourth scale. Um, it might be. It might be. I I thought they were seventy second scale. So in theory, Stephanie, can you grab the 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 ringed the the the, the star ringed? the the Star Wars ship that has a ring on it? <laughs> yeah, no, the ringed. As I say, oh my gosh, let me just be a goofball. It's the fir one of the first ones we did. It's the the maroon one that it's like a fighter ship of some. Like yeah, that one, and it's little, it's little dude. Yeah, I don't have a lot of... I, I'm fairly certain it's 60, 70 second scale. Um, thank you. So, in theory, if you put, like, the Jedi Starfighter next to it, um, it would be basically, like, that scale, just about. So, yeah. It, it would... Um, and the characters are about the same size. Actually, I think the character in this one might look a little bit bigger. Um, I'm not really sure. Thank you. I appreciate it. So... I I don't really I haven't done too much in 64 scale but yeah they're um I mean they're they're not too terribly big but the big one that got away oh man I almost pulled a gun off of this one let's uh you can't have you can't have vipers without having a little you know what are they going to support right so this was the boom there we go and I don't know the scale. I don't think there is a scale for this particular kit. But the the new Galactica, I think, Dick, you're asking me about battle damage. I I battle damaged the Dickens out of this one. I've got some photos on my website uh, of the buildup of this particular kit. But, uh, yeah, it even has the little... Um, uh, when, when they when they turn the, the, the starboard pod into a... What do they call it? A gift shop, I think. 
Uh, they have a little little windows across those. Uh, there's an there's a lot of aftermarket parts on this. I think I got the pair graphics details, and I, they ended up being used in a lot of different pieces on this one, it, including all the gu the guns on the top are all folded photo etch brass. Um, it it's a little disappointing to me. I loved I loved building this model. I think it's one of my best paint jobs on a model like this. And I brought it to Wonderfest that year. And Wonderfest judging is a very interesting contest. Like they will judge all the models. They call it a merit-based system. So it's not like there's only one gold, one silver, one one bronze, and so forth. If your model meets a certain bar, it gets a gold, it gets a silver, it gets a bronze. And it is um this one was very, very close. I, I got a silver for this one, and I'm very, very happy with that. Inside of the bays here, and it's hard to see, there's a little tiny seam where the body comes together. And that's like the one flaw that, in theory, gold-winning kits are like perfectly built, which is cool. I, I'm glad they do it that way. But um, that was the one thing that prevented me from... <laughs> from getting a gold. And I'm actually fine with that. I used to be a judge at Wonderfest, so I get it. The sad part is I actually had some pieces, some detail pieces that went inside there. And just because I was running out of time, I said, oh, no one's going to look inside that pot. I'm not going to bother. <laughs> I'll say that building that kit was a lot easier than modeling the CG model for the show. You know, Wes, I forgot you worked on that, didn't you? That's really awesome. Yeah, building this model was definitely a lot easier. Nine million polygons by the end of the series. What a monster. Um, I'm not going to tell you how, Wes, but I actually have... I've given some... Uh, I, <laughs> I, I've I've got a I've got a copy of the light wave model and yeah that your numbers match what I was trying to deal with when my machine was trying to render the layers of all the damage layers and all the original pieces and oh my word I can't even imagine it it bogged my machine down which at the time was newer probably than anything anyone was using on on Galactica the series so yeah you you have my sympathies. <laughs> Oh um, my gosh, it was a. I think it's a clever design. I really do. I I really liked um, kind of what they did with it. My my only disappointment with this kit, and I I, I turned into a I, I turned into a ranting fanboy when this came out. I feel bad about it because Frank Winsper of uh, Mobius Models and and now Doll and Hobby, I think did a tremendous job with all the Galactica kits. I was a little bummed that this one was a little small. Like I, I kind of wanted a, a, a bigger version so you could get more detail in there. But and, and I, I regret that I said that out loud and in the wild because honestly, once it's built and painted, I think it looks really nice. So yeah. Yeah, you can only open parts of it. Oh yeah, well, I, I think one time I, I opened up the, the CG file to this Galactica in Lightwave and it was like, well, I'm going to go get a drink and come back and hope that it actually opens all the layers I selected and, or all the objects that I imported. It's crazy. Uh, it was really cool, though, because it had, like, the major, like, damage holes. I didn't do the really big one on here. There's a gigantic hole in it by the end of the series. But it was kind of cool, like, just clicking off all the, the different damage layers to see what, what was done with it. It was pretty nifty. But, uh, yeah, this was as close as I've gotten to a gold at Wonderfest. So, yeah. But that's some of my... I, I, think, they, I think they make a very nice combo here uh, on, on their own. <laughs> yeah, those are the ones I kind of wish I had on the shelves. But really, at some point. <laughs> I think there's... What else is in this? Okay, I'm, I'm not going to show that. Show that one. Uh, let's slide this out of the way. There we go. I and did we do that one? I don't even remember what's in that one. Let's see. Oh, and some unbuilt ones. Let, let me take a look here. I'm gonna leave this out here while you look for the next bit. Oh yeah, this is um. Oh no, there's an there's one of the class of '96 right there. I have to sort out one. 
this one was fun, but I kinda wish that I had not filled that out too. Da da da, da 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 da. Can he pull models out of a box without breaking them? This is the question of the day. We'll we'll take a poll. <laughs> you know, I, I said we'd be getting away from Star Trek, but of course we can't for very long. It, it's it's not in scale with the Galactica, but um, I do have an Enterprise E. Yeah, let's get these. Let's slide the Galacticas over. There we go. That was a good time. And... I do have a nice Enterprise E. Oh, it looks amazing. The closest you'll ever get to silver medals. Sit down next. Oh, cool. Thank you. That's really fun. Sorry, I missed a couple of the comments there. <laughs> the only experience I've had with kits were the old monogram kits for cars. And you put together a Trans Am. Awesome. I don't know, Nick. Maybe you should pull together, find a good car kit. They're, they're, some of the newer ones are really nifty. I really enjoy them. Someplace on the shelf. Oh, it's, it's beyond reach. I, I've got a 68 Oldsmobile on the shelf. That's really pretty. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I, the Enterprise E, also from First Contact. I'm sorry, it was in a different, uh, different box here. This was the original release by by AMT Ertl. Um, not a lot was really altered on it. I added some detail. I actually did hand paint, not hand paint, but I, I. I masked and painted a lot of the details that are now offered as decals in the newer versions. But my my paint scheme on this one was a little bit warm, uh, warm toned, warm shifted. And that was because I was using a photo reference from a book that they'd shot the model outdoors in the sunlight. And it it tended to be yellower, I guess you could say, more so than anything else. And so, yeah, this was uh, this was decent. Yeah. The 1701E. I got to tell you, I, I had every intention of lighting this model, but then I got into building it, and I'm like, nope, I'm just going to, it's going to be a build and a paint job. So I, I still think this is a great ship. It looks like it's moving a 1,000 miles an hour just sitting still. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I don't know where the base is for it, so we're just going to leave it as it is right here. I, it's probably in one of the, I think it's in the last box that I just slid over there. So yeah, little enterprise. Oh, bless you. It's there's a lot of dust in the air. <laughs> there's way too much dust in the air. <laughs> there we go. That's really the only one. Oh, and I did have the other one here. It's funny. This was not actually a kit, but it goes with it. Um, this was a limited release of the the captain's yacht, also designed by John Eves. Hey John, you're getting a lot of you're getting a lot of play here on this one. There we go. No. Yeah, Johnny's did a lot of work on these. It's pretty cool. Serious hot rod, exactly. Um, this is the the captain's yacht, which they 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 finally showed in the movie Star Trek Insurrection, um, and it, it it's actually this little. This little knob up here under the bottom, this is a bigger scale version of it. The idea was this thing would pop out of the bottom. Well, it'd be like this. It would pop out of the bottom, and the captain had their own their own yacht, the captain's yacht. Um, this is a neat little pre-painted resin sculpture that was a limited edition promo that, that was available after Star Trek Insurrection. I, I don't even remember where I got it from, but uh, yeah. All of this is painted. I didn't have to do anything. It was all hand done, and it's now part of the part of the permanent collection. <laughs> the The goal here is eventually to have a nice little, uh, you know, nice little place where I could put all of these up and and really showcase them all in their geeky glory, if you will. Let's slide that back over there. I. Thank you all so so much for sticking around for all of this. I do appreciate it. We both do. And I I hope you've enjoyed it so far. We still have a few more we're going to go through. And uh, feel free to ask the questions. Luxury escape pod. All the plebs just get sardines into the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Stuffed into sardines, into the crash webbing. Or we stick them in the escape pods. The captain gets his luxury yacht. <laughs> Exactly. When escape is of prime importance. Oh, uh, this is regrettable. I don't, um, this one's a little bit on 
this one's a little bit on the the busted up side, unfortunately. Uh, there was a I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it like this so we can see it. This is also another model kit contest uh, concept for my local hobby shop that is no more. They used to have a science fiction model club. They actually still meet, which is really great. But one year, we were given this helicopter model, and I don't recall the name of the helicopter, and you were supposed to turn it into something. And at the time, I was still kind of fixated with Dune. So uh, isn't supposedly go down with the ship? Yeah, the captain's supposed to go down with the ship. Exactly, right. Unless you've got a captain's yacht. <laughs> So I, I took this helicopter, and I don't recall, again, I don't recall what kind it was. I, I, and someone else would probably be able to be better better prepared to. Unfortunately, it lost its front leg. Um, supposed to do like that. There we go. And I wanted to tie this in. You know that thing. Oh, cool. Have you seen this one before? There's a back door that, I, I, that popped out. I... I took the design from the 1984 David Lynch movie, um, the, the wings on the top. So this is actually based entirely off of the, the, the ornithopter from the David Lynch Dune movie. And that became kind of the centerpiece. And I wanted to, to alter the module underneath it just to kind of give it a, a feel of that like bug-like quality for this um uh for, for this model there's actually there there actually is an interior in it i was pretty proud of that but i don't have oh there goes the door <laughs> i i don't have any lighting on it that i can actually let me see if i can grab a, a, a light here oh i've got one right behind me yeah there we go let me see if i can i can make this ah not that one okay never mind we have no lights we have no lights a giant mag light. Let's see if it if it shows up in there. Yeah, I did a little uh too too much too much. Christmas lighting. Yeah, I I did some cockpit effects in there for like you know seats and things. Oh yeah, there's a door on this side with a window. Um. Let's see if I can get the get it looking like ah uh, it's really hard to see. It needs it needs lights on its own, but I I really kind of liked the David Lynch. Um, movie aesthetic. It was kind of a uh, you know golden and semi luxurious, but dusty because it was on a desert planet. Um, so yeah, that was kind of fun. I I actually think I've I've got a painting of the the dune sandworms up on my store. Um, I'm kind of thinking I'm going to take that off my store and I'm going to mix it with this model and make it kind of a painting with a model effect. So I, I'm kind of glad that I found this because I'd like to get it some repairs and put that all together. But I, I, I really enjoyed doing this. It, it It's taking a model of something and turning it into something totally different. Um, and there's actually a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun with that. We used to do a bunch of those kinds of things. You would modify a kit to look like something completely different. And, and I, I really enjoyed that part. Um, I didn't get in on enough of those. Sometimes I would miss the contest or something and uh, but I really enjoyed those. So yeah, so far so fun. Uh oh. Is it raining? It's hailing. Oh, we have hail. Even better. It's really coming down. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh yeah. We are. I might try to power through some of these. <laughs> oh, I have all the robots. Anyway, I won't do the toy robots. Yikes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Thank you all so far for, for hanging out with us like this. This has been fun for us, and I hope it's been as much fun for you. And, oh, that one came off. No! These wonderful little models by Skyhook Models of <laughs> Day the Earth Stood Still. Hail, no! We won't go! This one's so tiny, I don't even know. There's a there's a little Klaatu laying down there in front and a Gort standing in front of the ship. I I, I love these little models. I, I'm so thrilled that I picked these little things up. But not to put a few of these out, just for good measure. Did it get cold? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, man. 
I didn't ex we didn't expect hail. We really didn't. <laughs> Yikes. Um this is a broken unfinished one. Let's see here. What else do I have here? I do want to do this. Eventually. You want me to unbag it for you? That would be actually if you can unbag this one, that would be really great. Okay. And let's see, what else do I I don't even know what that is. There's the kit there. Sorry, I'm I'm grabbing new I'm grabbing more models. Yes. Just to see what we can come up with here. Well, more models to put out. Because this one's actually kind of fun. I just don't know what this is. Oh, I know what this one is. Yeah, we do want to, want to pull this one out here too. There we go. Set do you that. Want to scan? Yes, please. And I don't know where the... I, I wish I could remember where the actual um, stand for that one is. Let me see. Because it's, it's got a signature on it. I'm going to pull a few things out while we get this together. Earth versus the Flying Saucers. Yes, with the with the um, the Washington Monument. This gentleman, Skyhook Models, uh, is really, it's it's really fun. And he does a lot of these little scenes like this. And I, I had a grand time putting those together. They're fun to paint. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Got a couple of things here. Let's see if I can't. Sorry, folks. Some of these are going to need a little construction. Let me see if I can find... I think I might have the base in here for that one, Stephanie. Let me see. Yes, I do. Yeah, I don't know where the stand goes. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I was I was giving Stephanie my, uh, my, my, my models to help me with, and, and I made them impossible <laughs> to do. Oh, I just don't know. <laughs> There we go. All righty. Thank you. Earth versus the Flying Saucers. And, oh, there it is. Yeah, right on in there. There we go. I hid the, st I hid the stand post. This model's got a story. So so thank you for helping me un unbox it. But, uh, yeah, actually, I, need, I, I did that the wrong way. Um, yeah, they all have a story, I realize. I could sit here and do this all, all night. But, uh, I, and again, thank you all for finding us, even though my live thing didn't work quite so well uh, i do appreciate it this wasn't rehearsed i don't know if you notice but it wasn't rehearsed <laughs> not even in the slightest here we go i'm gonna slide these down there this one actually where did that bag go with it yeah this there we are okay that one has, this goes with a bag because there's a piece in it there. Okay, back to it. I present to you the INSS MacArthur. I'm going to go to that one in a second. And I know some of you who followed me on Starship Modeler over the years have probably seen this model. And I, re I regret I never turned it into a, uh, into a kit. Uh, but maybe someday, who knows? This was a depiction of the ship from Larry Niven and Jerry Purnell's The Moat in God's Eye. And Starship Modeler, way back, did this really fun contest of build something from a comic or a book that wasn't in a movie. You know, we haven't seen it in a movie or a TV show. And I had just seen a very brief interview with Larry Niven that was posted on local television in the Seattle area, and it had design ideas for a movie based on the book *The Moat in God's Eye*. And unfortunately, the book the book was never turned into a movie, but the designs were created by none other than Aldo Spin uh, Spinaldi, who is now the president of the International Association of Astronomical Artists. And he did a lot of really cool designs. But I, I, I didn't, I wasn't recording the show. It was a public access Seattle show that I just happened to catch when it was airing. So I grabbed a sketch pad and and threw together my thoughts on what, you know, what these it was cool designs. It follows the book's description, although the book actually describes a completely different ship based on a different model altogether. Um, in fact, I want to see if you can unwrap this little, oh, it actually came out pretty easily. I think, I think, I think I got it. 
they they wrote the book and it was actually based on this um this little winged spaceship right here the leaf erickson galactic cruiser and that goes that's the reason why i pulled this stand out because it goes right there i wish i had the, the batteries for this but who knows um there we go so but instead of it being a flat ship with the uh with the wings on it i i went with this approach that was more of a of a spherical ship and you know i i kind of this is all scratch built with plastic uh pieces i think i used a couple of different um they were they were basically used for ornaments they were polystyrene spheres and uh i think the the nose cone bits were from a plastic model rocket uh, so it was mostly a kit bash you know kind of my own thing and I've always kind of wanted to take this and turn it into a uh, into a kit. I've been asked people about that, but I just never did. What's really fascinating was I was able to bring it to a science fiction convention here in north of Seattle called, oh, it was in Bremerton, uh, not Bremerton, blah, 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 Bellingham, um, that Larry Niven himself actually uh, showed, showed to. Love the backdrop stand. Thank you. <laughs> And I, I showed it to Larry Niven, and he actually did sign the base of this. I have, it's actually Larry Niven's signature. But when he saw it, he was like, he, he thought it was the the other ship in that uh, in that story, not the MacArthur. There was another ship named after uh, Lennon, so he thought it was that one. It in his mind resembled more of that. And I was like, okay, I get it. I'm not gonna argue with the guy that wrote the book, but you know that's okay. So that was pretty cool to be able to show him the something that I had created. And then yeah, this uh, this was fun. Uh, the, the stand itself. Thank you for mentioning it, Wes. This is a, a small, a scaled down version of the Leaf Erickson Galactic Cruiser. Um, it was a little resin kit somebody put out, and I I always this is actually one of my first accidental attempts at space art without actually doing space art. <laughs> I guess I wanted to to emulate the um the cover art for this this model kit and uh so i painted the background planet this is all airbrushed um and I, I did a planet here too and unfortunately i wish that i had batteries in this i don't think that it will go oh i think there are batteries there's a battery pack thing no anyway no it's it's locked up in there okay never mind um some there are there are actually stars that are LEDs so yeah <laughs> and uh, so it actually the, the stars actually glow when I have a battery pack in it but I I hand painted the background airbrushed it and I've always wanted to do this shape for a uh, for a model display this kind of curving monolith if you will and it was one of my I I think I've only done something similar <laughs> excuse me a couple of times and this is this is the one I was kind of happiest with and it was more or less a prototype uh -huh. sorry about that uh -huh. yeah anyway oh yes loved it. I I've enjoyed Larry Niven's books too he's really had some some cool stuff his known space books are really fun but yeah so I'm, I'm very happy that with how this turned out overall the box is a little wonky and I I I've learned a lot more about lighting, so I'm, I'm hoping I can maybe kind of rescue some of these at a later date. <laughs> but yeah, my MacArthur. I will leave that out while I get the other piece together. Let's see here. Dun, dun, dun. We're running out of cable. We're almost, we're kind of almost to the okay. end of it. I'm just going to go through a couple more here. Yeah, so if you've been with us so far, folks, thank you everybody for sticking around. I'm going to probably do just a handful more of these. And then we'll, we will call it. Um, but yeah, this has been been a lot of fun. Um, oh boy. Getting to one of my other favorite shows. Here we are. Unfortunately, this one does not have a, uh, a lighting bit to it. But there we go. I... I really dug this stand. This isn't even the full model. This is just the stand for this particular model. I'm actually going to have to pull the camera back a little bit. But um, here we go. 
And I think I'm going to hold on to this until I get the model out. Let me back this on up a little. I also really love Space 1999, and I'm very happy to see the awesome Space 1999 model kits that have come out in the last few years. Uh, thank you, Round 2. Jamie, if you're still there, thank you so much. There's some really cool stuff in there. Um, I think I just got their, their prop set recently. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. So this one goes back to, oh, the olden days. The olden days. You know, first off, let's just start with the crash scene. There we go, because nothing quite says Space 1999 like an incomplete crashed eagle. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Very typical, right? Um, it, it's got a head, I swear. Oh, there we go. There we are. Let's get the... Uh... Let's go ahead and get the uh, the front end of it. I, I very cleverly attached it with a stick. <laughs> yeah. So, this also... Oh, gosh. How did this one go? It goes up like this, up like that, I think. Yeah. All right. There's a hidden and very difficult to do... Yeah, there we go. And then there's a brass bit here. Yeah. 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 Now you gotta now you gotta do all the music, right? I hope the music is going in your head right now. I, I, I hope the theme is going through your head to this. Let's back this up and see if we can't show this whole thing. There we go. I'm gonna move it like that. Yeah. The costumes were awesome. I loved it. Yes. The Space 1999 Rescue Eagle. And this was the original MPC kit of this particular ship. And I just want to get the camera in here, if I can. Um, ah! Too too fast! Too fast! Duh! Yike! Um, boom. This model had all of these cages were all just basically a solid box. So I decided I was going to go absolutely nuts and recreate all the detail behind them. Yes, including 70s wah guitar. Yes, oh my gosh. The music was brilliant. There we go. When I first built this model, I was I was very young and I I I tried to do the red stripes and it, and it was just it just didn't do it any justice and I know it's it's going out of focus. So I'll pull it back here a bit. Um There we go. Pull this on back so we can actually see the whole thing. It's 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 a tall it's a tall presentation. <laughs> Let's just push that back a bit. There we go. All right. Including seventies. Yeah, I caught that good. Okay, so um, so the goal was for me. To, I wanted to build a lot more detail. There, all the little cages were put together under here, and uh, it's unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, the model is still incredibly inaccurate. It, it's close to what you would expect an eagle to look like. But the newer models that have come out are absolutely gorgeous. And if you really love Space 1999, definitely seek out Round 2 has some great kits. They've got big ones. They have a big eagle. It's awesome. Oh, I love that base. The entire presentation. Thank you. Looks great for what you had to work with. Oh, thank you. It was really... Oh, I keep keep bumping my camera. Thank you. I was, um, I was just going to do the model... But at the time, I had a pal of mine working at an architectural model company, and he had access to a laser cutter. So what I did was I, I mapped out all of the, the moon base buildings, and he laser cut the buildings plus like a, a, a sheet they could drop into. And then, so they, they're a little tall. The buildings are taller, but the sheet was like a puzzle. You just dropped them all in with, after they were painted, and I, I used Aves epoxy sculpt for the the moon base itself i i'm actually happy i think i'm happier with the moon base than i am with the eagle i mean the eagle i th th this eagle model kicked my butt trying to get this thing to look good and i it um it's unfortunate i i, I think it got like maybe a merit award at wonderfest but it, it was it's difficult to see what work it goes into and it still kind of comes out just okay i i like it it's it's one of my favorite eagles but uh it it is the old 
MPC Eagle. Let's just let's just be clear. <laughs> but um, yeah, my 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 base isn't holding up well. It keeps getting uh keeps getting a little funky there, unfortunately. But yeah, I this was one of my favorites that I that I put together. Um, I I didn't know how you fabricated that. Oh yeah, thank you. The um, it, getting access to laser cutters and things before even 3D printing came out it so huge was has been has been a lot of fun and you could do a lot of really cool stuff the the planet in the background is also just me airbrushing a very Jerry Anderson space 1999 looking planet i i did some of my first star flicking ever as the background <laughs> i I like this kind of presentation for models where you, especially sh ships that are flying, and I would like to have done more of this instead of just kind of a ship on a stand, is kind of have them, you know, with a, so, something that would fit in a bookcase and, and give it a scene, if you will. So my, my goal going forward for some of this would be to do more of those like that. Yeah, that would good, look good with lights too. Oh, I, even back then, Nick, I thought about it because all of the acrylic that went into the moon base is clear. In theory, I could just shine a light from underneath it and etch out the windows just fine. So yeah, <laughs> you, you nailed the look on the planet. Thank you, Wes. I appreciate it. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, this was, I, to me, it, it, it's one of the models that has been one of my favorites to have. And even if it, you know, didn't like win any awards or anything. It's still, it's still very close to my heart. And I, I have a couple of round two Eagles in the box. So I want to return to this. There, there are more Eagle designs to be made. <laughs> oh, let me see here. Oh, I think this one's really broken, but, um, So yeah, I, I, I wish I could show some of you my, my Moya from Farscape, but unfortunately I don't have one that I've actually... I, I, I've got kits, but I, I don't have any that I can build or that I've built. So I, I sold all my buildups, so I can't show that, unfortunately. <laughs> but I think the last one uh, on the mix here, just because I've been on the Lost in Space kick... I had this neat little, oh, this one's really broken. Oh, here, I, I, I'll pull it out anyway, but what the heck? Oh, it's so sad. Um, we, we've got one more one more Jupiter 2. I really wish this one didn't break, uh, but that's what happens when you fly them cross country. I, I just thought this is a neat little gem of a model. I have this, uh, I have this little solid resin Jupiter 2 with the little stands. Um, and I kept the stand anyway. There we go. Yay! And this is another one that, I don't know, just this just this basic shape makes me so happy. I don't, I don't know why. And I love that I have this little one. I actually put, there's not lights, but there's little squares of clear styrene that I painted in the light pattern and set them in so they're, they're glossy just like the windows the, the windows have a gloss to them and uh the paint job is just a mix of gray and silver it someone told me it was probably one of the most boring models he's ever seen but he loved it so that was at a contest that I had it in but I, I love these little things and with it uh I don't think it's going to stand up there no it's really it it just barely stands so yeah more more lost in space models. <laughs> yeah. You stayed in that one. It's true. I stayed in it. I couldn't make it. <laughs> yeah. That, that's part of the reason why I'm on this lost in space kick. So, yeah. Um, that that kind of completes all, all of the ones that I actually can show because a lot of the rest of them are sort of in pieces. So, yeah, this one right here is... Um, Oh, uh, there's one other one in here. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. We're still on... Oh, but it's broken! No! <laughs> the the movie Jupiter 2. <laughs> that went... Oh, it is. Yeah, it... it this one, okay. Oh, the cats took it? Probably. The cats, yes. we. This one had a cat accident. <laughs> but yeah, the, this little one, I, I love this little size for this model. And... Um, Get, getting back to that that little one, I, I, I laugh because 
I, I told you how I, I was a little upset with Frank uh, from Mobius Models saying that he made his Galactica too small. Well, I, then I told him that his Jupiter 2 was too big. Because, <laughs> really, the the Mobius Jupiter 2 is huge. It's really huge. I'm like, you should have done a small one, too. He's like, oh, my God, you can't please everybody. <laughs> I I did tell him that just to give him grief. Then. Thank you. And I... I think he understood that I was just giving him giving him a lot of grief. There is a cool one in here though. Oh, sorry, I keep hitting things. Ah, sorry. Oh, it's gone. That can't that can't feel good. I, I I do. I've got an Independence Day alien invader. This is the the infamous welcome to Earth bit. I forgot I had that one. So yeah. There we are. <laughs> yeah. Does Thank you. Have that yeah, Wes, does your garage look like ours too? As I, I, I there's a lot of models in the garage. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, this this little kit is a lot of fun. I I remember, I I just honestly, I I felt like I wanted to just paint something, and I threw this together in a night. This was this was a one day build, a one night build. Oh my gosh, there's still dust. Yes, hold on. Ah, there we go. We will de-dustify it a little bit. There we are. Oh, or, or Wes, were you thinking the the movie Jupiter too? Yeah, yeah. This is this is a lot of fun. There, there's like you know, it's a lot of dry brushing, airbrushing, and some patchiness. Uh, it's an excellent kit for that sort of thing. It, I, I can't recommend it enough. Some some models lend themselves well to just doing a quick build. But oh my gosh, I I, I got to do a pan across all of these. <laughs> now, there are some other models here that are in so many pieces. Uh, e either they fell just from old Adra cats. I just don't feel like I can... Um... Oh, well. I just don't feel like it would really do them too much justice. No, actually, that goes to... That goes to the Mad Max car. I don't... I, I have to find that one. But, you know, sometimes... Ah, there's dust. There's dust. But all, most of these kits were things I enjoyed growing up. And I still enjoy to this day. And I remember, thank you, Polar Lights, for doing the Mach 5. Because, darn it, who didn't love Speed Racer? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Yo. Actually, I'm going to slide this out of the way. We're, we're at the broken fit model phase, unfortunately. But still, yeah. Ah, come back here. Dude, I will send you a photo. You will <laughs> laugh at the books, model kits, and drums. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that that's kind of what happens to all of us who get involved in the uh, in in the hobbies like this. You you end up collecting more than you can actually build, which is a little unfortunate. But um, sometimes, if you don't get them, they go away. So you've got to be careful. Yikes. <laughs> So yeah, uh, this is my. There, there were a few others again, like I said, that were on my shelves previously, and we've pulled them all out. Here's Steph. Oh, she's getting out of the way. Sorry. So we've we've pulled them all out here. All the ones that are reasonably decent. You have that exact kid in my cart. Love Speed Racer. I, I got to tell you, I think Aoshima has done a really nice one. The Polar Lights one is a little weirdly. It's a little narrow, but it, it's hard to nail down the. Um, the actual shape of the Mach 5 because it it, it wasn't <laughs> they weren't super accurate depicting it in the cartoon so yeah I know anime nah Speed Racer was a cartoon let me be serious <laughs> yeah so I for for the things that I have that are presentable that's my that's my model kit show and tell and we have some more that I would absolutely love to um, to start working on on the live stream. We I, I've got two of the Polar Lights Large Enterprise models. In fact, I just got one of the most recent releases of the old Enterprise, the original series Enterprise. And my pal Ross Waddell has helped me with a nice light kit for it. So we are going to put that one together. And even though I might not show every step of it, we'll be we'll be experiencing the build together. Because, yeah, as you can see, I, a lot of these kits are, are... Most of the ones I did were pretty small. It's time for me to do the larger ones. 
But uh, yeah, awesome. The physical speed racer cars here in L.A. at the Peterson Auto Museum. Oh, who would not want to have the original Mach 5 to drive around? That would be hilarious. <laughs> I'm willing to be part of a heist, too. <laughs> Free the actual Mach 5. Oh, that would just be like one of the shows, wouldn't it? That would be perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that's going to wrap up our model show and tell for today. And if I forget any, what we'll do is we will come back and do this again and maybe do a deep dive on any of them. Uh, now that I have some of them out, I wouldn't mind getting some photos and posting them just on the site. I, I have some photos, but not not of all of them and not all of them built. I know I don't have the Galactica one built. I, so I'm glad we got the Vipers and the Galacticas out because, yeah, I really wanted... There's an there's a missing Enterprise actually now that I think about it. Yeah, well there's um, more boxes out there, but we just quickly looked in. So we just quickly I looked in them. It could be anywhere. It could be anywhere. Yeah, there there are definitely a couple that I I don't I don't know exactly where they're at. So thank you. Oh, Radio Busta, that's okay. You can watch it again. This has been super fun for us too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie, for stopping by and and. And thank you all for finding the stream was since we had such a hard time firing it up. But yeah, fun way to spend a gross afternoon. I I always wish I had built more kits. You know, that's the thing. I, I used to, I built some that I gave away. I've sold a few. I built the refit enterprise model for Galaxy Hobby and they had it in their store for years, but it um it's missing. Who knows where it is? So I got to build another one. So. I'm sorry, the which? Your props. Oh, the props. Yeah, I have a whole box of props. I know where the. I, that's one of the two that we oh, we didn't okay. pull in. So yeah, there there we could do a whole another episode on props, hand props. That could be kind of fun. <laughs> so so thank you all. I really appreciate you sticking around with us, and uh, this will of course remain up on YouTube for all eternity. But no, then we'll we'll come back we'll come back and revisit some of them and uh, yeah, very cool. Thank you all, everybody. I'm gonna sign out for the night. It's gonna be pretty abrupt because none of my animations work. So uh, we will catch you all on the next live stream, which will be this coming Wednesday, 6 p.m. PST, over on the other streaming thing, Twitch. Cheers, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Oh, did I do the Blade Runner spinner? Oh, quick last question. Um, yeah, I uh, I have a kit of the Blade Runner spinner, but I haven't built it yet. So I I just have a little one on my shelf that came with the uh, the Blu-ray set. Uh, any plans for another art sale? Yes, there will be another art sale coming up. Nick, thank you for asking. Uh, we're gonna have details on that. We have to sort out some some of it. So we'll probably have the announcement for that at this week's live stream. So anyhow, it's off to enjoy the rest of the Saturday, everyone. Thank you so much. And Stephanie says, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, so much for your help. I appreciate it. She has helped a ton. And we will catch you all next time. <laughs>